Welcome investors to the 40 Finance channel. So earlier this week, I did a video on Microsoft price predictions for the year 2022. That seemed to go over pretty well, so I'm gonna dip into Apple now. Apple hasn't completed their fiscal year yet. It ends uh, at the end of September. So we're going to do price target for 2021 for Apple using a simple formula of projected EPS and PE ratio. And new out this week, uh, check down in the description. I just made a 15 minute stock analysis guide that might be helpful for some of you folks. Uh, I get a lot of questions about how I look at stocks and research stocks. Uh, so I put it all together in a PDF uh, the 15 minute stock analysis guide is free when you join my email newsletter and that is linked below. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections are just my opinion for your entertainment. Please talk to a financial professional before taking on the risks of the stock market. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. We're inching our way to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you everyone uh, for your support. All right, let's kick things off and look at where Apple stands today. You have a price of $499.05. And of course, we have a lot of hype about the uh, four for one stock split coming up. Uh, that price today, if it was split, would be $124.76 per share. So we'll keep that in mind as we put our price targets together. Current PE ratio is $37.85. And EPS, the last 12 months, is $13.19. And you can see on the chart to the right, you got a 52 week range of 204 to 515 every single time I think Apple is done growing, which I believe I've made two videos on now, one in the neighborhood of 330 and the other one around 450. I'm like, man, there's no way that this stock has any room left to go based on you know historical valuations. Of course, the stock market is uh, not trading at historical valuations, and Apple has certainly benefited uh, going up, you know, roughly uh, $250 or so in a 12 month span, if not 300. Unbelievable run. All right, so does the run continue? We'll take a look at it from a few different ways. And just like I did with Microsoft, I just want to cover the quick parameters here uh, for how we'll be evaluating our price projection. All right, pretty simple formula on the top bullet point. Our price equals projected PE by projected EPS. We're gonna go through and make our picks for PE and EPS through the next couple slides using not only historical data, but also kind of taking a temperature in today's market and trying to project where it will land. Second bullet point there, Apple fiscal year runs October through September. So their next earnings report, which will come somewhere around Halloween, will actually close their 2020 fiscal year. Now Microsoft, in the video I did earlier this week, they have closed uh, 2020. So it was a little bit easier to look ahead to 2022 uh, because analysts have already caught up. Bottom line here, this prediction is for October 2021 where we end up. And of course, this is all subjective data. This is my opinion. I will of course use common sense and analysis to come to uh, a conclusion, but subjective data is in play. All right, so the first thing we have to do is project the EPS for Apple. Where will it stand at the end of the 2021 fiscal year? All right, and to get a good head start on this, we're just going to use the hard work of the, of the many analysts who report into Yahoo Finance. And if you look at the top of the screen there, there's a green bar. That section is the earnings history for the past four quarters for Apple. And what I've highlighted is what is labeled the surprise percentage. So basically, if you go up to the top of that section, you have EPS estimate off to the left, and you can see that you know the first one, for example, the estimate was 284. The line below that, the actual that Apple reported was 303. That's a difference of 19 cents or 6.7%. Skipping ahead a little bit, if you take that across four quarters, 
Um, you can see that Apple typically does surprise, including a huge surprise uh, this past quarter, plus 26.5%. I have to pick something in the surprise category, positive or negative, and based off of what we've seen in particular the last two quarters, uh, I'm going to sit at 15% as my broad surprise percentage for Apple in fiscal 2021. All right, the section down below, EPS trend. And what you have with EPS trend is, you know, analysts are always getting new information. They're always adjusting uh, their price targets. And so, you know, the projected EPS changes over time. And you see in the blue box at the very bottom where the yellow is highlighted on the bottom line, 90 days ago, if you follow that box to the right, 90 days ago, the Apple EPS for next year was projected at 1473 across the analysts. You scroll up to the top where you've got that blue and yellow sort of combo box, it's already at 1552. So the projection for next year has already went up like 80 cents, which is amazing. Most of that is because of the surprise percentage that we've seen in the area above that. Now with that EPS trend moving so quickly, I have to pick a side on this and I'm gonna go aggressive. I'm gonna be using $18 as the EPS target. Uh, that factors in the surprise percentage of 15%. And it also factors in uh, that we've seen basically an 80 cent boost already in the last 90 days. So $18 is gonna be my target EPS in the formula. All right, so we've got our EPS of $18. So we've got one of the two variables that we need in this simple formula. The next, of course, is PE. PE is uh, much less mathematical as it is like a market sentiment, bulls versus bears. Uh, but we're still gonna go in and do our historical research and see what we come up with. All right, so this is the past uh, several years of trailing PE metrics for Apple. And looking across the board, I mean, Apple is typically traded at a 20 PE or less for the past several fiscal years. Now, of course, this year, uh, things are much hotter on the PE side and you have a trailing PE of 38.37. So this really makes it interesting uh, to have to project that for 2021. You look over to the right, uh, the average is 20.18. I'm gonna use a 29 PE to so sort of wimp out in the middle a little bit. My opinion is that PEs for tech stocks across the board is eventually going to fall. I think eventually you get a, a small boost in interest rates and that will uh, probably set up alternatives to the stock market for investing. And then on the Apple side specifically, if we're looking to make a price projection that comes in, uh, won't get reported, let's say, until uh, 1031 of 2021, the, the hype of the 5G, 5G cycle will be over. They will have released their phones and, and the broad segment of Apple users will have access to whatever realistic 5G capacities uh, they are gonna have for that year. So that's what I'm picking, 29 PE. That is more than Apple has traded for in the past, but it is still less than what we're seeing today. All right, so 18 EPS, 29 PE. Let's take a look at what that adds up to be. All right, so this is coming across the top, 18 EPS times 29 PE. That is a stock price of $522. That, folks, is less than 5% up from today which is crazy to even think about, especially when you factor in that right now the EPS projection is still in the 15s, and I basically added $2.50 to that. I just noticed on my top headline, this is projected price for September 2021. It's actually October, because we won't know what the earnings are until October. So small housekeeping item there. Looking off to the far right of the top headline, 130 0.5, that is after the stock split, okay? So 522 is in today's format, and then when the stock does split, 
this all breaks down to $130.50. Now looking in the middle of the page, these are a couple other scenarios to keep in mind. We could have a lower EPS, 16, times a higher PE, which is today's PE, and you'd have a price of $608. That is up, you know, over $100 from today. And on, a, on the stock split, you'd be at $152. So that's how big of a deal today's PE is. This, you know, that's why they say the multiple, right? Because it's the price that you're paying for these earnings per share. It makes a huge difference. Going down to the last example, what if EPS was higher, but PE was lower? Then Apple would actually lose uh, from where it sits today. You'd have an EPS of 20, uh, but the PE would be back at the average Apple PE. The stock would be down by $100. And if you're looking ahead to the stock split, the shares would be $100 even. And the funny thing about that is a lot of people, if it was at $400, they'd be like, this is ridiculous. It's so uh, undervalued. But they would actually have kicked butt in the EPS department and their PE would be the same that it's historically traded at over the past five plus years. All right, so what's the bottom line? Well, no matter what the price is for 2021, I think every investor knows that Apple is a pretty solid pick for long-term investors. It's definitely one of those stocks that you can just keep squirreling away shares, and hopefully when you wake up in 10 years, uh, you will have a significant return on your investment. And like I said, with Microsoft, if you don't like how my numbers turned out, you can play with them yourself. Just use EPS projection times PE ratio, and you can come up with some numbers pretty quick. Just make sure that they make sense at the end of the day. And lastly, there's so many moving parts to this formula, to really the EPS and PE projection. There's so much with the economy. There's so much about new products. Uh, how high is the valuation of the broader market? What are people willing to pay for stocks? This stuff all comes in to play. I made my best guesses here, but the one thing you can see and you should understand, particularly as a young investor, how much buying a stock in today's overvalued PE market can really come back to bite you in the short term, particularly if you're expecting to do like a one year swing trade. Long term investors really hold the advantage in an environment like we're in today because you can sort of buy in and you can say, well, it is overvalued right now, but I'll, I'll keep buying some to stay in the game, uh, but I'm gonna wait till a dip to throw a lot of money at it. That's kind of what I've been doing. And it, it keeps you in for the wins, but you're still waiting for that big opportunity to go very long off the backs of a major price dip. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this Apple price target for 2021. Let me know what stock you want me to do next in the comments, and please give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Appreciate everyone's support. We'll see you on the next video.